Andrew Tibbs, and welcome to Automophiliac. Today we have a new episode of Cars I Want to Buy, the series where we look at an interesting vehicle that I would ever so much love to buy, but can't actually buy because I have no money or space. We will go over the vehicle on offer, review some of its specs and history, and finally I provide three reasons why I want to buy the car. Today's car is this beauty of a 1980 Oldsmobile Delta 88 Coupe, and with only 34,000 original kilometers or about 21,000 miles, it could very well be the nicest stock B-body GM I've ever seen. It's all blue, with baby blue metallic exterior, a baby blue half final roof, and a cushy blue interior, with the front seats having a great view of the wood accented dashboard. Exterior condition appears to be excellent with the only flaws evident from the photos appearing around the door sills, where the paint has chipped off and some surface rust has formed, as well as some yellowing on the lenses for the accent lighting on the B-pillars. All of the paint, pinstripes, vinyl, and chrome look darn near showroom. It even has original looking wire wheel hubcaps and period appropriate white wall tires. Underneath, the floor is clean and is void of any undercoating, with much of the sheet metal looking factory fresh. The frame does display some surface rust, but looks solid, same with the gas tank. Given the age, I would consider replacing things like bushings and body mounts just in case there's any dry rot, but these components may be fine. Full-size GM cruisers have a habit of holding up really well over time. Looking under the hood, we find the original everything, including a 5.7 liter V8, which was the big engine option at the time. All the components look brand new, save for a little surface rust on the brake booster and a little bit of wrinkling on the edges of the emission sticker on the fan shroud and the AC compressor line insulator. All of the interior looks mint, including the upholstery, door cards, seat belts, and trim. The dashboard is free of cracks and the carpet looks supple and ready to nap on. The pillow back seats are plush and ready to carry you to your next destination in total comfort. All it needs is a driver to hop in and pull the column shifter into D. Then I bet this car would eat up miles for days. All of this 1980s opulence can be yours if you go to the leasing company in Ottawa, Ontario and plunk down about $15,000 Canadian. It's more money than I ever thought anyone would ask for a B-body, but it's 2022 and the market is what the market is. To be completely frank, if I had $15,000 to spare, I would be the chump of all chumps and buy this thing no questions asked. The Delta 88 traces its roots all the way back to 1949 with the introduction of the first generation. Created as a replacement for the straight 8 powered Oldsmobile 78, the 88 was powered by a new rocket V8 engine that made it the first real car to beat in NASCAR. It was such a great performer that many consider the Rocket 88 the first muscle car. Fast forward to 1977 and the 88 nameplate is entering into its 8th generation. GM downsized the car from previous generations, cutting about 900 pounds off of it in the process. However, despite this drastic reduction in size, these cars still offered comparable interior space. Under the hood were a cadre of various engines, including many different V8s, ranging from 260 to 403 cubic inches. It should be noted, though, that this is still the malaise era, so none of these V8 engines offered anything close to the muscle car performance of just a decade or so prior. The 1980 model year saw a minor refresh, with comparatively more aero-inspired styling that would essentially go unchanged until it was discontinued in 1985. The engine in today's subject car put out a miserly 160 horsepower and about 270 foot-pounds of torque, just enough to modestly surge the boat to 60 miles per hour in a leisurely 11 seconds. Fuel economy wasn't too bad for a big car with a big V8. Average EPA estimates were about 18 miles per gallon US or approximately 13 liters per 100 kilometers. Nothing to write home about in this day and age, but thanks to this generation's weight reduction, not bad all things considered. So why do I want this car? Well, first of all, the obvious reason is that this car is probably the best original B-body coupe on the market today. There aren't a lot of these left on the roads and to see one that is this well kept is very special. I doubt another one will come along like it in a long time, and by then, who knows what they'll be worth. Next reason I want this car is because it's got the 5.7 liter V8. I can't remember ever seeing a Delta 88 after 1979 that had anything bigger than a 307, unless you count that turd-like 350 diesel. So seeing a 1980 with a 350, and it makes it all the more special. I know it doesn't make a lot of power, but it makes more than the smaller motors, 
so at least it can keep up with traffic and get out of its own way. Finally, and anyone who's watched my previous B-Body video knows this, I have a soft spot for these cars because the first car I regularly drove was a 1985 Caprice, and that Caprice was the same color as this car, and the only thing I wish my Caprice had was a coupe body and a 350. And here it is. Essentially, this car represents everything I wish my first car could be. How could I not instantly swoon over its blue small block Bodhi coupeness? Well, I did instantly swoon, and I did briefly regret buying my Cougar for about 10 seconds, because had I not bought it, I certainly would have this thing in my driveway already. So what says you, faithful viewers? Do you think this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to own a near-perfect piece of automotive awesomeness? Or is it an overpriced brick on wheels that doesn't deserve a second look? That's it for today. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to ding that bell so you can get notified whenever I get around to randomly posting another vid. Thanks for watching. TTFN.